now we have got uh, last speaker for this session uh, mr navin khandelwal from hero futures over to you navin thank you thank you <clears throat> so i think um, good morning everybody a lot of things have already been spoken about um, and uh, I, i think the topic is uh, clean tech so which uh, allows us to cover wind solar and rooftop three distinct areas and uh, i'll try to spend maybe some under 50 seconds on each of the uh, areas and then we can come back to the larger discussion so i think <clears throat> yes there are there are on ground execution challenges there are there are micro issues uh, so on so forth all of us are practicing in in the particular uh, industry and and keep encountering issues but if we go back to the larger picture the macro where are we headed and what we had set out as a target 3 4 5 years back then i think the analogy could be uh, we we took off on a great flight and uh, with the assumption that we'll will touch 35000 or 40000 feet and have a very smooth ride and which will last for long but just after touching 20 22000 we started feeling we are already very high and the flight started experiencing the storm and uh, which was because of some right and some wrong reasons who was behind that uh, uh, i mean those storm factors uh, that that could be discussed but that's where we are we are yet to reach the peak before that itself we are feeling shaky and i'm not sure though there are efforts being made i'm not sure where would we land whether it will be soft landing hard landing or we could we could actually go back to 35000 feet which is which was the aim right so i think that that's analogy about almost every every uh, segment of the sector all three wind solar and rooftop right now why it is happening i think a couple of things which are as fundamental as they can get are going wrong in our view um infrastructure which requires long term thinking uh, and of course power and renewables are subsector or subsets of infrastructure what is happening in the minds of both regulators and policy makers is more often than not we are trying to compare this with either consumer facing industries or industries which are just once purchase and then then, then you could start kind of getting post purchase dissonance kind of a thing and that is true for not only ppas but even for the policy as a whole so all this ppa story whether that is happening in uh, solar or wind or partially even in rooftop is comparable to that that whatever has been um, sort of uh, done as a process whether it is a bid out process whether it is a fit process whatever process people are in realizing now based on current sectoral developments that was my decision right should i review it and that is ca causing lot of issues so i think that mindset has to change that infrastructure and or power sector any sector which requires long term patient capital to be deployed for the growth of the sector cannot have every 6 months 9 month 9 months or 12 months rethinking happening again and again right so that's one major uh, issue in in our mind uh, uh, and because and because that is happening we are not able to move forward to the newer horizons while we are struggling in the same same uh, sort of uh, basket of issues and um, uh, three four weeks back we were discussing about risk management i mean there was an event on risk management into renewables and i think my uh, or, or rather a lot of people's reaction was industry has come a long way people have started factoring in lot of risk factors and trying to uh, price them accordingly but what is happening environment which includes uh, policy makers regulators and developers themselves are facing newer and newer risk factors which nobody had thought of 3 years back so once we address three risk factors somebody successfully or unsuccessfully throws three more on us which were not thought of at all that somebody could even think of relooking at the ppa somebody could think of um, duties whether it is add or sdd or a, <coughs> sgd any kind of duty so point is instead of moving forward every 6 to 9 months we are rethinking on the older Uh, or rather settled issues and that is making the right bumpy that's one um 
second thing is uh, if you talk about uh, of course great news which we heard three days back is ease of uh, i mean india has ranked very high i mean relatively higher i mean from 130 to 100, uh, 100 in terms of ease of doing business but if we go down in the in the details of the of the report then we are still at 156 or 164 some number in terms of enforcement of contracts that has been the big big cause of concern uh, not only in the renewable sectors ipps minds but country as a whole niti ayog had a special event two months back on only four topics and one topic was enforcement of contracts we as a country are somehow again have a habit um, have a habit of post purchase dissonance and trying to open the closed contracts whether that is uh, main one is the ppa but even even epc contracts or module supply contract people always try to continuously improve things which is good as far as excel sheets go but doesn't work when it goes for the larger business uh, <clears throat> now uh, talking about um, some of the factors which got discussed some of the points which got discussed so i think on the receivables i think our take is different a lot of things have improved uh, gone are the days when rajasthan used to be eight months now rajasthan is as current as possible so only last bill is pending all others have been cleared and this is not for one month but for eight months in a row uh, same is true for a lot of other states even maharashtra has paid up a uh, number of times of course they are not being consistently but intermittently but still the story is not that bad everybody almost everybody has been paid till march 17 which is again not a desirable situation to be in but not as bad as it was maybe six months back so i think we are improving there as well so across the country receivables are are in much better shape than six months back um, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what is happening to the current bids uh, i think uh, what meets the eye of general public is is uh, not the reality unfortunately now, industry has gone into different orbit altogether where where each and every parameter is uh, being analyzed through uh, magnifying glasses and people are trying to uh, optimize and uh, further optimize um, the each parameters uh, number uh, which is good as well as bad good because it is adding to the competitiveness of the power and overall acceptability by discom but bad because nobody is sort of uh, kind of providing for the unforeseen factors uh, things which could come up uh, while we execute uh, execution of renewables is far, is far more easier vis-a-vis -vis coal sector or larger infrastructure but still execution is execution we could encounter a lot of issues so the margin for error has shrunk to such a low number that it has to be perfect execution then only people can make what they are planning to make which itself is a lower number but but news like whether this is sustainable or not sustainable our take on that is if execution goes not that bad these are just very close to sustainability level of course margins are very 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 tight but i think for that uh, only partial blame can go to government significant blame has to come back to the developer community because we as a sector uh, or sectoral participants uh, have more than enough dry powder everybody wants pipeline so it's a fight between growth versus profitability which is which is a historical fight when when businesses grow so people who are valuing growth more are letting go of the profitability so that course correction has to happen at particular investment committee or boards level i don't think government can do much beyond two things which we expect from government to do or rather three things one supply of projects should be increased because half of the desperation is because of lack of supply of pipeline or projects uh, second is uh, some kind of quality checks if they can be which is concerned of almost every investor whether debt investor or equity investor that when people are falling to 264 or <clears throat> 244 what will happen to the asset quality so i think yes entrepreneurs are supposed to make money they would try to cut corners so unless the the bidding guidelines themselves have some uh, sort of benchmark set then we could enter into that risk zone so that could be second expectation from government maybe slightly tighter uh, sort of guidelines on the, on the asset quality and I think the third thing is um, uh, visibility of future bits much in advance while instead of this expectation what we have been getting is absolutely uh, random postponements of bits and bits are being postponed three hours before the expiry date which leaves entire planning process uh, I mean which take uh, which which kind of uh, 
takes the entire planning away and puts the planning process to to toss, uh, throws it to a toss, right? So uh, today, today Gujarat bid, Gujarat wind bid is supposed to happen. This is fourth time it is happening after three postponements, and we are still hopeful that in the next 120 minutes we will get to know whether we are supposed to bid or not supposed to bid, right? So this we have been made kind of habitual of, which is absolutely undesirable because these kind of issues impact business planning in such a bad fashion you can't focus on your uh, execution uh, you can't plan your resources and which ultimately has to factor into the returns because cost has to be factored in uh, <clears throat> now another thing is uh, asset quality is one risk but because returns in the sector are i think very uh, close to being capped now because of um, too much supply of capital or too many developers or xyz things i don't want to comment on that so then a focus has to shift to the risk management. I think written enhancement is, is, is just a wish list now. So people who are able to manage risks are or expected to fear are expected to fare better. Otherwise, return boost up could happen opportunistically once in three, four, five projects, but expecting mid-teens or high teens is I, I think a thing of past. Uh, <clears throat> on equity recycling, exits and mergers, uh, I think I think Swisti is bang on, yes. Um, a lot of discussions in the marketplace, but uh, very, very few closures, um, which is again mismatch between sell side and buy side, which is again not uncommon. Um, so I think uh, that's a matter of uh, some time, how many people will be able to uh, stay afloat uh, quarter after quarter after quarter or quarter on quarter. So I think six months, 12 months, 18 months, we think some, uh, I mean, some transaction should or would close because uh, as the industry matures, consolidation is bound to happen and uh, exit options for the, for the small or medium sized players, which are varying from 200 to 500 megawatt, are not many now. So it has to be sort of consolidated. It's a matter of time. Uh, <clears throat> now in terms of growth of uh, demand for energy, I think that is again major uh, factor which is contributing to what is happening to renewables. Of course, that is impacting significantly the, the larger power sector, which is coal and rest of the uh, fuel sources. But even renewables are facing the brunt significantly because of this, because no discom actually wants to buy power. Whether power surplus is actual or, or calculated or manufactured, that could be a separate <coughs> discussion. But as we are declaring power surplus, the need for power a purchase is, is not that high uh, and that is uh, causing uh, again rethink in the minds of discom should i buy if i should buy shouldn't i renegotiate the previously declared tariff or previously arrived at tariff which was as transparently arrived as it, uh, as possible even the fits which are being questioned these fits were determined by the same regulators after very very clear public hearings these are not bilaterally negotiated contracts but anyway, so that's another big thing. Uh, uh, last thing I think from my side is, is, the, is the, the, the movement, uh, I mean, is that, uh, future uh, thing. So I think on future, we are, we are absolutely uh, lagging behind. Uh, the foresightedness is going away because we are struggling from the current issues. So there is no policy on hy hybrid, despite last 18, 24 months of efforts. There is no policy on the storage. There is no policy on off-grid. Uh, sorry, uh, offshore wind, which might not be required for the country at the moment. So the point is because we have our own existing issues or challenges to deal with, which are self-inflicted wounds by uh, I mean, us. So that is hurting the growth of the industry and we are not able to look at the 5, 10, 15 years down the line picture and we are becoming myopic in our view while we struggle day to day. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Navin. That was excellent presentation on the several challenges faced by a typical large uh, developer, I would say. Uh, now I would like to throw it open to audience. If you have got any question, please be specific. Also in terms of who you are, which organization you represent, and also to the person or the panelist whom your question is directed to. So we will have probably two to three questions before, uh, before we close the session. As an organizer, I would like to uh, raise an issue which I think a lot of developers right now are facing is a very simple thing, customs clearance and misinterpretation of under which uh, tariff code solar panels, though it has been clearing very successfully in the past, but 
So anybody would like to comment on what's really going on uh, as respect to the customs clearance? Yeah, no, I'll just share very quickly, a, just two minute answer. We've had a situation right now where Chennai port customs officials have called our panels uh, DG uh, uh, generation thing and charged us uh, customs duty, etc. So what we've had to do, which is just a silly, silly thing, is that we've, we're having to ship our next shipment to another port where the customs officials are still using the previous uh, interpretation and bringing it in. Uh, what is sad is the fact that even despite talking to uh, the government and the MNRE secretary and despite the government sending many notifications to these customs officials, uh, it still carries on. So that's the situation. We had that same problem in Mumbai. Uh, we are having that same problem now in Chennai and we're getting around it by getting it through another port. But these are silly problems that should not be happening. So I think the way solar and wind industry has been progressing and uh, target of 175 gigawatts, probably I think uh, at the junction at which we have arrived where we are seeing the problem of crop uh, power surplus, PSA is not uh, getting signed, uh, bids getting uh, postponed and probably power surplus is also not very correctly defined having because the distribution channels are not so good that uh, everybody has real good access to quality power. So what I believe is uh, as an individual that probably our country needs to have a different mission altogether of having 100% renewable energy or maybe let's say 50% or 75% renewable energy and sequentially we need to cut down like there was uh, some time ago some uh, talks about uh, phasing out of some coal assets old coal assets which probably hasn't happened till now so such kind of things really needs to be done at the top level from the government or policy makers level so that more and more renewable integration can happen and also energy storage really needs like we've seen recently a tender NLC tender of energy storage so I hope uh, it gets implemented fast in the pilot demonstration and the the you know the experience phase of uh, energy storage uh, goes through uh, smoothly and we come across uh, lots and lots of storage unless and until we will not be able to really well, I think 100 gigawatt would be difficult uh, to achieve then in, in, in that scenario, which very, very as an industry and as an individual who have dream of achieving uh, in energy independence would be very, very difficult. So uh, definitely uh, we need to uh, reshift our uh, focus and we need to have a much more aggressive growth plan set for renewable energy now. So this is uh, from uh, my side, uh, but definitely I would like to thank all the panelists uh, for really enlightening us with a lot of uh, new current uh, opportunities and uh, real challenges uh, guy, uh, people are facing on the ground with respect to net metering like uh, is uh, even I have had a similar situation putting a net metering uh, system on my residential rooftop. And uh, even uh, during import clearance, I had similar issues. So if it is, uh, these issues are there for smaller systems, definitely not a lot is at stake. But if you're doing big rooftops and such kind of things happen, so all negative vibes go in the commercial and industrial entities, which are very, who people are very new to solar. So we should be very careful uh, in, uh, you know, kind of, uh, expanding the industry to the next level which are the commercial and industrial entities and then definitely residential entities also in the future. So thank you very much, uh, request a, a big round of applause uh, for an, an, a very energetic start of the day two. Uh, I'll further take this opportunity and uh, request our session chair Balwanji to present small mementos uh, to uh, the speakers on the dais please.